Welcome back. In part 2.1, we looked at the theory around implementing a custom performance metric. And now we're going to look at how this is implemented in the code. So we start with the onTester function. Now, this is a function that's not mandatory in your expert advisor. And so you'll need to create this if it doesn't exist already. So here we just define our custom performance metric as a double variable. And then depending on what the value is of this input variable here, the custom performance criterion, this will determine how we calculate the value. So if we just take a quick look at this, we can see here that we're setting this to a default value of a modified profit factor, which we discussed in the previous part of this video. But this can take one of three values, as you can see here either no custom metric, which means that we'll be using a standard out of the box custom performance metric, or the standard profit factor, which is just using the standard calculation for the profit factor. And then we have the modified profit factor, which if you remember, is going to do two additional things. It's going to remove any trades that have been adversely affected by news events. And it's also going to use normalized values for the profit and the loss of each trade so that those trades with larger lot sizes don't skew the calculation. Now, the first condition here deals with the standard calculation of the profit factor. And for this, we simply use the tester statistics function, passing it the parameter of the profit factor. And this sets our custom performance variable to be equal to the standard profit factor. The next condition is our modified profit factor. And here we call a custom function called modified profit factor, and we pass by reference our custom performance metric variable. And this then gets set within this function and is accessible from this calling function. What this function also does is return the number of trades that have been executed as part of the backtest. So this single statement both sets the custom performance metric value and gives us the number of trades. Now what this modified metric also does is eliminate any of the parameter values that have fewer than a certain number of trades. And that's for reasons of robustness and in order to ensure that we have statistical significance in our results. So I've got this set at the moment to a threshold of 50 trades. I'm actually going to increase that up to 250. So now any optimization parameters that deliver fewer than 250 trades will simply have the custom performance metric set to zero. So they'll effectively be eliminated from the ranking and from the process of selection. We do likewise if the user has chosen not to use a custom metric. And so in this case, every parameter iteration will be set to zero. And then importantly, we must return this value at the end of the function. And this returns it to MT5 to allow different parameter values to be ranked as part of the optimization. So let's now take a closer look at the modified profit factor function where the actual calculations are going to take place. So here, as you can see, the custom performance metric variable is being passed in by reference. So the first thing we need to do is use the history select function for the entire time period in order to retrieve all of the deals. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm also outputting quite a bit of diagnostic data in order to explain the process a little bit better. And so here you can see that I'm opening up a deal diagnostic file. And this will contain a list of all of those deals that we've just retrieved using history select. So following this, we then loop through each of those deals in date time order and select the deals that are of particular interest to us. And for us, this is all of the deals of type deal entry out. 
This effectively means the closing of the trade, and so it's these deals that contain the profit information that we're after. Now to explain this better, it's probably worth looking at a diagnostic file that I created as part of a previous run. So let's go ahead and look at one of those now. Now, as you're probably aware, when we save files as part of a optimization in the strategy tester, the files don't get saved to the normal location. So whereas files in a production environment would get saved into MQL files, when we run the strategy tester, we have to go all the way back to the meta quotes folder here, into the tester folder, into the hash of the installation, and then we have a list of the agents that are responsible for running the optimization in the strategy tester. So if I go into the first agent here, we now go into a new MQL folder structure, and the files here are the ones where we're writing the deal information out to. Okay, so let's just tidy this information up a little. So you can see here a list of all of the deals that were retrieved using History Select. Now, this includes in deals and out deals as part of trade executions, but it also includes things like um, balance entry. So you can see here the starting balance of 10,000 that I requested as part of the optimization comes in as a deal entry as well. So we need to be careful that we don't consider these as part of our calculation for profit factor. Also, if you've made any programmatic withdrawals as part of the expert advisor that you have, then they will also appear here. And so it's important that you view this information to carefully decide how to choose the deals that you do need and eliminate those deals that you don't need. So in our particular case, as I said before, we're interested in all of the deal entry types of deal entry out, like the one you can see here. And it's these, as you can see, that contain the profit that was a result of the trade that was executed. So for example, this deal entry out here with position ID two relates to this entry here. So this is the opening of this euro yen trade, and this is the closing of that same trade. So the deal price here is the open price, and the deal price here is the closed price. Now you'll notice for my broker, that commission is spread out across the opening and the closing trade. And so when I do my calculations in the expert advisor in a moment, I'm just going to take the close commission and multiply that by two. So coming back now, you can see that my main condition for selecting the deals that I want is those with a deal entry value of deal entry out, as I said. So for every deal I find, we resize our array where we're going to store this information and then set that. And as you can see here, I'm setting the overall net profit of the trade to be the deal profit plus the swap, which is a negative value, plus two times the deal commission, which again is a negative value. And so this will give us the net profit after charges. Now you'll notice that I'm also storing the deal volume of each trade in this other array here. And the purpose of this is so that I can normalize the profits and the losses across all of those trades with different position sizes. And this is going to help us to eradicate one of the issues that we talked about in part 2.1. Now, as you can see here, this is just the code to write out the information for each deal that we viewed a moment ago in Excel. So the next thing we're going to do is perform a number of calculations. And to see these, click on the link here to part 2.3.